This is the time to make tawbah. This is your opportunity to stop sinning. This is your chance because now shayateen are chained. So you should turn to Allah, stop your smoking, your lying, your cheating, your bad behavior with your parents, your bad behavior in the neighborhood, your everything you do. Everything evil you may be doing, minor or major, this is your time to stop for good and turn to Allah in repentance. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِصَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ My respected brothers and sisters, I am honored to be here once again at, at Masjid Al-Humayra in East London Sharif. And it is always my pleasure to be with you. And uh, today I will be addressing a very, very important topic because Ramadan is ahead of us. We are very close to the month of Ramadan and it is one of the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month of Ramadan is one of the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are very few times or periods when a Muslim can actually make a tangible, solid, quality connection relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the month of Ramadan is one of those periods. There are other periods when you can do that. For example, uh, when you are on Hajj or the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they are very special days. Just like that, the month of Ramadan is one of those special opportunities from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we can actually get our sins forgiven because we all sin. Every single one of us is a sinner. Every single one of us. Some on a minor level, others on a major level. We all sin. We all, by nature, make mistakes. We commit errors and we sometimes commit sins deliberately. And we need Allah's mercy. The month of Ramadan is that time of hope. And we are not to give up on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we are sinners, and the Prophet sallallahu said we are sinners, we must turn to Allah repeatedly at all times. And we cannot give up on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the general rule is that we sin. The Prophet sallallahu said, كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمْ خَطَّاءَ وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ التَّوَّابُونَ All the children of Adam are sinners or they make mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes are those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, by that virtue we all make mistakes and we all must repent. And the best of those who are not negligent towards repentance. What kind of people don't repent? What kind of people don't repent? To my mind, there are two types of people who don't repent. The arrogant ones. The ones who are arrogant. They have kibber. They don't think they have to repent. They think they are right all the time. They haven't done anything wrong. They haven't made a mistake. They haven't cheated anyone. They haven't smoked or they haven't, you know drunk something uh, that's haram or they haven't had any illicit relationships uh, and the list goes on. They haven't cheated, they haven't lied. Uh, so some people don't ever mistake, accept their mistake. They don't ever surrender themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't ever bow to Allah in humility. So this is one type. Kibar. Just like Iblis. This is what caused him to fall. Kibar. Instead of repenting, when he rejected Allah's command, what does he do? He justifies it. He justifies. Ana khairu minhu. Ana khairu minhu. Khalaktani min nar wa khalaktahu min tain. You made me from fire and you made him from dust. Therefore, I am better. So he used his rationality. Jazakallah khairan. He used his rationality to 
supersede, to override, to overrule Allah's command. And instead of repenting when Allah questioned him on this, instead of surrendering to Allah, submitting to Allah, what does he do? No, actually, you know what? I'm right. I'm right. I know better. This is what pride does. Arrogance. You know, this is what it does. It causes you to lose everything in life. You lose your relationships. You lose your dunya. You lose your akhirah. You lose everything when you are arrogant. Another type of people are those who are negligent, who are lazy, or who lose hope. You can add a third category as well. Those who lose hope, they think, oh, I am so bad that I will never be forgiven. There is no way out for me. For those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim, bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Qul ya ibadi, الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. Say O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم say to them from me يا عبادي O my slaves what have do not despair from the mercy of Allah لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله do not despair from the mercy of Allah because He forgives your sins collectively. He forgives your sins collectively. He puts them together and he forgives them. Allahu Akbar. This is how generous Allah is. When Allah is telling you that he is generous, he is forgiving, and he will forgive, why do you doubt his ability to forgive? Why do you even put yourself in that position where you're thinking, you know, maybe not me. This is from shaitan. This is your little thinking. This is your short-sightedness. This is your jahl. This is your ignorance of Allah. This is your ignorance of the Quran. This is your ignorance of Allah's majesty where you start thinking that I am too bad. I'm not going to be forgiven. But what about those who do turn to Allah in repentance, who want to be forgiven in spite of all their major sins, and minor sins. What does Allah do with them? Allah forgives them. And the best time to do that, my brothers and sisters, is the month of Ramadan. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this month a blessing for the entire ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the extent, to the extent that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated in a very, very powerful hadith, so that you realize, you understand how important this time is. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانَ فُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ وَصُفِّدَتْ الشَّيَاطِينَ When the month of Ramadan comes, the doors, the gates of Jannah are widely open widely open and the gates of Jahannam are tightly closed Allahu Akbar this is with tashdeed futihat the prophet could have used the word futihat but when there is tashdeed there is emphasis that the gates of Jannah are widely open and the gates of Jahannam are tightly closed and shayateen are chained why are they chained so that you can have a month of respite from shaitan and your devils and your jinns and your shayateen whispering to you so that you can turn to Allah and dedicate your time. This is why you see the worst creatures on the planet in the masjid in the month of Ramadan sometimes. I'm not saying, <laughs> astaghfirullah, I'm not saying people praying taraweeh are the worst creatures. No, no, no. I'm saying you will find some of the worst people out there. You have seen them the whole year. You don't see them in the masjid. Something happens to them in the month of Ramadan. Crime goes down in certain areas. Okay. Drinking goes down. Smoking goes down. Other issues go. And they end up, some people, some of these people, they've never seen masjid for the whole year. They end up in the masjid. What happens, man? What changes? Sufidat so ashayateen. The, the jinns, the shayateen have been chained. They have been chained. So there's, you know, no influence from the shayateen. 
That's why you end up in the masjid. So this is Allah's mercy announced by the Prophet ﷺ. You want to be forgiven? You want a chance? You want Allah to have mercy upon you and forgive your sins? Then this is your chance. This is your chance. And there is so much in this month that if you actually take benefit from it, you'll be shocked. It's not only the entire month, but there are periods, there are times within the month that Allah has allocated for special forgiveness, like the last 10 nights. And in those last 10 nights, there is one called Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. Laylatul Qadr is the night when Allah revealed the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the ultimate sign of his mercy upon humanity in this night. So what, what, is the, what, what is the indication here? The indication is that it is this night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expressed the ultimate gesture of his love, love for humanity. The ultimate gesture of his love for humanity. The ultimate blessing for humanity the ultimate source of mercy for humanity was expressed, was manifested in this one night. And it didn't stop then. It wasn't a one-off. Because of that, this night will be a night of mercy until the day of judgment. Because of that one act. And what was that? What was that? إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahr. Allahu Akbar. It was in this night when the Quran was revealed. What is so special about that? Let me explain very quickly. When Allah introduces, introduces himself to humanity in the Quran, when Allah reveals the Quran and tells humanity what he wants from humanity, and within the Quran, within this book, within this revelation, he introduces himself. Who is he? And there is a chapter specifically for that. And that chapter is called The Merciful. The Merciful. And that chapter is Ar-Rahman. So how does Allah introduce himself to humanity? Ar-Rahman. Chapter 55 of the Quran. Surah Ar-Rahman. Where Allah, he starts to remind of his blessings. He remind humanity and jinn. Humanity and the world of jinn about the blessings. This is why repeatedly you read this verse in the surah. فَبِأَيِّ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ Then which one of your Lord's blessings will you deny? You too. You too. Who is he talking to? He's talking to mankind and jinn kind, which one of your Lord's blessings will you deny? Why is Allah talking like this? Because he is reminding repeatedly, this is who I am. This is what I did for you. And how does he start? Subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ar-Rahman, number one, verse number one, Ar-Rahman, the merciful, the merciful. Why? Number one point, point number one, why is he merciful? عَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ Allahu Akbar Point number one عَلَّمَ Quran. He is the merciful because he taught the Quran He is the one who sent the So what is Allah telling you here? That this is the ultimate sign of his mercy This is the ultimate manifestation of his mercy The Quran And this is why The month of Ramadan is important Because it was in this month In this night when the Quran was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ulama are of the opinion that the Quran was revealed, of course, in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, in the cave of Hira, when the Prophet sallallahu was alone and Jibreel came to him and took him into his arms and squeezed him hard three times and told him, Iqra, read. And the Prophet was shocked. He didn't know what to read. He said, Ma'ana biqari'in. I am not learned. Read what? And then Jibreel 
gave him the first five verses of the Quran, which are to be found in chapter 96, Surah Al-Alaq. Uh, the first five verses were given to the Prophet Wasallam in the month of Ramadan. That's why in Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces the month of Ramadan as follows. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس بينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليسمه ومن كان مريدا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in Surah Baqarah verse 185 introduces the month of Ramadan. That the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed as a guidance for humanity and as a sign, as a proof of guidance. And it is a criterion between haq and batil. This book, this revelation divides falsehood and truth ultimately, finally, for humanity. And anyone who finds this month, anyone who finds this month, you must fast in it. Okay, and then it doesn't stop there. I'll come later to another point, the point of dua, which is connected to the month of Ramadan, Allah's mercy. So the month of Ramadan is the month of the Quran. Not because the Quran was revealed in it, that makes it the month of the Quran. But also in this month, you can read the Quran diligently and reach closeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah's mercy has been manifested through the month of Ramadan in a number of ways. Number one was the revelation of the Quran in this month, which is Allah's uh, manifestation of Allah's mercy, ultimately speaking. Then also, there are injunctions about the month of Ramadan, whereby we are told by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that in this month, if you pray diligently, if you fast diligently, your previous sins will be forgiven. For example, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ سَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِصَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan, believing in its obligation, believing in the obligation of the month of Ramadan, which is from the Quran, and وَاحْتِصَابًا hoping in Allah's mercy that Allah will reward you for that belief and that action or acting upon that belief by fasting, then your previous sins will be forgiven. Now there is a debate among the ulama. This is only the minor sins or the major sins. Some ulama, albeit a minority, they actually say the actual wording of the hadith, the apparent wording of the hadith denotes or signifies the fact that all sins. Because it says, غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن ذَنْبِهِ أو غَفَرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن, uh, مِن ذَنْبِهِ That your sins that you have sent will be forgiven from your sins. So this could be major and minor sins so long as your fasting is with firm iman in the belief that Allah has made fasting obligatory and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for fasting in the month of Ramadan, Allah will forgive your sins. What a great honor. What a great honor. What a great opportunity. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. What a powerful opportunity for Muslims, for believers to have this chance having disobeyed Allah for the whole year some deliberately, some unwittingly. You have the chance to turn to Allah and Allah will forgive your sins so long as you are humble. So you're not one of those three people. You're not a proud person. You're not negligent, 
and ignorant towards Allah's bounties and you are not someone who has lost hope in Allah's mercy. You are truly fortunate if you are one of, uh, you know, if you're not one of the three, if you're not one of the three and you come to the masjid, you fast in the month of Ramadan and stand in the month of Ramadan. إِذَا مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَمْ Anyone who stands in Ramadan. Again, this is about the night prayer. When you pray at night to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your, again, sins will be forgiven. So the month of Ramadan is that golden opportunity when you can actually get your sins forgiven. Also, Laylatul Qadr, what does Allah say about it? It is in the month of Ramadan. It is to be found in the in one of the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. This is why the ulama of Islam, they say don't miss any of them. Don't be stingy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't start counting, oh, I'm going to only pray on the 21st and I'm going to be chilling on the 22nd. I'm going to come back on the, the 23rd and I'm going to be chilling on the... Do you think Allah doesn't know your minds? How you play games? No, don't do that. Because you don't know. You're, you might have started Ramadan early. You might have started Ramadan late. So you don't know when your Ramadan will start. You don't know when your Ramadan will start. Right? Whether you started at the right time or the wrong time, it's possible to have one or, day, one or two days, uh, you know, um, here and there. So for that reason, don't leave any of the 10 nights. Don't leave, leave any of the 10 nights. You know why? Why am I telling you this? Why am I making this point? Because what Allah said and what His Prophet ﷺ said. Allah said in the Quran, in Surah Al-Qadr, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر You know Allah's language in the Quran is very powerful Don't take it lightly The words of the Quran are chosen very carefully This is Allah talking to you And what does he say? He tells you that it was in this night when the Quran was revealed Now he goes further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he asks you, now that I've told you that the Quran was sent down, the ultimate manifestation of my mercy was sent down in this night, what do you think this night is? What do you think? Okay, or do you have idrak? Do you have the awareness as to what this night is? And then he answers the question. By simply telling you a formula, he gives you a formula. Allah doesn't even try to explain in detail what this night constitutes and its blessings. Allah doesn't go into that. Allah simply states, Laylatul Qadri Khairum min al shahar Allahu Akbar. This one night is better than 1,000 months. Better than 1,000 months. Subhanallah. This one night is better than 1,000 months. And 1,000 months are equal to 83 years. And I can guarantee you, I don't know the future, but I know life experience. I've been around the world. I can guarantee you. Again, I want to be more careful. I think, this is my thinking, this is my thinking, I think most of you will not live that long. I think, I can be wrong. Again, I cannot guarantee would be like, I'm trying to make a prediction, no. I know on average, most human beings don't live for 83 years. Do you agree? Do you agree? Most people, they kick the bucket at 60. 70 at max okay they die at 60 70 most people actually in some countries life expectancy is very very low in some african countries life expectancy for example malawi i was told last that the life life expectancy is there is mid 30s most people died mid 30 in mid 30s 
okay reasons another question many many countries in the world there are very few people who live that long and there are many reasons for that many many reasons so what is allah telling you in this verse that this one night is longer or better than 83 years for what for what to do good deeds to go to do if you do good deeds in this one night if you manage to find this one night and if you pray diligently in all the 10 nights where it is to be found it is one of the 10 nights one of the odd nights in the 10 nights of ramadan if you find it if you manage to actually worship in this night allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do sadaqa do qiyam or do an act of kindness or do uh, any act of goodness it would be as if you have done it for 83 actually more than 83 years because allah says khairum min alf shahr khairum min alf shahr it is better than 83 years so this is Allah telling you, He is giving you an indication that make sure you don't miss this one night of worship. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. You would be truly unfortunate because it will only come a number of times in your life. Your life is very short. It is very limited. Let me explain your lifespan, your life cycle. Human beings, generally speaking, there are three parts to their lives. The first 20 years, the middle 20 years, and the final 20 years. 60 years, if we divide our life into 60 years, first 20 years, you're still growing up. So that's your growth period. Middle 20 years, that's your peak, the peak of your youth. When you hit 40, you start to decline, your hair go white, you start to get conditions and problems and joint pains and da 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 the list goes on. And by 60, you're already on bonus. So this is human life very short and out of these 20 years you get in the middle the peak of your youth half of it you sleep half of it you sleep right if you sleep eight to nine hours that's half your day gone right the other half that's left little bit little of it i want you to think very carefully about this you're on, on holidays you're you're with your friends you're chilling, you're watching football, you're watching TV, you're studying, going to uni. How much have you actually given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that other half? Let's say cut your, ten, uh, your 20 years into 10 years. That's your peak. The peak of your youth is 10 years when you're awake, when you're actually conscious, right? In that, you're doing all other things. Yes or no? Yes, how much have you actually given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much of that? How much have you prayed your salah? How much of sadaqah? How much of hajj? And how much of actual good deeds? How much of your zikr is actually, you know, in that time have you given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Very little in comparison to your lifespan. Very little. Of course, you have first 20 years and the final 20 years as well if you live that long, right? But the peak of your youth how much have you have we actually given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much have we thanked Allah? How much have we worshipped Him? How much have we honoured Him? How much have we loved Him, practically speaking? And still He wants you to go to Jannah. Still He wants you to be successful. Still He wants to give you these chances. Still He wants to give you these times where you can actually compensate for all of that all that time you have missed all that time you played games you were busy with your kids your wives your uh, you know friends and your work and your cars and your businesses and your education and other pastimes all of that time that belonged to Allah that you should have been worshipping Allah in that time How does Allah give you a chance to compensate for that? This is how merciful our Lord is. This is how, you know, this is how magnificent He is in His mercy and His uh, generosity. 
He has given you one night every year that equals or actually better than 83 years. If you find 10 of these nights at the peak of your youth or even your elderly age or older age, you are loaded. You have a huge chance where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look upon you with mercy because you again believed in the promise, number one. You believed in the promise and you acted upon it with the intention to be rewarded. This is very, very big with Allah. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu said, Man qama laylat al-qadri Man qama laylat al-qadri Imanan wa ihtisaban Ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi Just like the month of Ramadan there is a generic, a general hadith that anyone who stands in Ramadan or worships Allah in Ramadan or fasts in the month of Ramadan, their sins will be forgiven. Just like that, in this one night, if you worship Allah in this one night with the belief that this night has been ordained by Allah and hoping for Allah's reward, He will forgive your sins. Not only the month of Ramadan will be a source of that, this one night, Laylatul Qadr, will also be a source of that. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu <coughs> Alaihi Wasallam mentioned this very, very specifically. Okay, how about people who do not benefit from this great golden opportunity that Allah has provided for us? Okay, what are some of the ways to uh, benefit? For example, fasting is the first thing that comes to mind in the month of Ramadan. The virtues of Ramadan, I have already explained why this month is important and how powerful it is and how much of an opportunity it is for you all to take benefit from it. It doesn't stop there. I want to now explain what you can actually do apart from fasting and um, qiyam, qiyamul layl, you can also make dua. Firstly, number one is the Quran. You can read the Quran. I want to give some practical tips now so that you can benefit from this great opportunity. We all understand now, I hope. Do we understand how important Ramadan is? Yes. Reminder is important. We already know how important it is. But sometimes we need this shake up call i don't call it wake up call i call it shake up call right we need to shake each other sometimes for them to realize or for us to realize how important it is so now it's imp it's clear that ramadan is a is a great blessing from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the greatest blessings from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month there are times and periods when we can actually get our sins forgiven and we can turn to allah with toba Okay, this is the time to make toba. This is your opportunity to stop sinning. This is your chance because now shayateen are chained. So you should turn to Allah, stop your smoking, your lying, your cheating, your bad behavior with your parents, your bad behavior in the neighborhood, your everything you do, everything evil you may be doing, minor or major, this is your time to stop for good and turn to Allah in repentance. And Allah will forgive you. There is a promise. There is a guarantee that Allah will forgive you. Okay? So you make Tawbah in this month of Ramadan. You make Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sincere Tawbah. Ya Allah, help me. Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, overlook my mistakes and my sins. And give me the tawfiq to remain steadfast. Give me istiqamah. Oh Allah, only you can help me. No one else can turn my heart and my mind away from sins and bring it to you. Oh Allah, only you are muqallibul qulub. Only you are the one who is musabbibul asbab. You're the one who can turn my heart towards you. Oh Allah, turn our hearts towards you. Ameen. So, the one who makes Tawbah is most beloved to Allah. And the one who makes Tawbah in Ramadan is even more beloved to Allah. 
So the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith that when a slave of Allah turns to Allah with Tawbah, Allah becomes so happy. Imagine someone who has been sinning, someone who is sinful, someone who's done many sins in his life. And that person has a very low opinion of himself. Naturally, low self-esteem. That I'm a sinner. I don't even know if I'm going to be forgiven. I don't know. But what is Allah thinking of such a person? When he turns to Allah in repentance. He obviously doesn't have the knowledge of Allah. And Allah tells us what Allah is thinking of such a person who is a sinner who is burdened by his sins and he turns to Allah in repentance with Tawbah. When he turns to Allah, Allah becomes so happy. Allah becomes so happy that it is like a person who is in the desert with his camel, with all his belongings on the camel, his food and his, you know, all his provisions and the camel runs away. The camel runs away in the desert and now this person has lost hope because the camel is gone if the camel is gone you're a dead man walking you're finished you're only a matter of time you'll die because you can't walk and cross the the desert without water and food you're gonna die but then in that state of mind his camel comes back he is so happy He is so happy to see this camel coming back that he loses his mind out of happiness. And he says, Oh Allah, you are my slave and I am your Lord. He becomes so happy. He's so happy that he's lost his mind that he doesn't even realize what he's saying. You understand? You know, when you become so happy and so excited that you start saying things you don't understand. Right? This is how happy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes. The Prophet gave us an example. When a slave of his turns to Allah in repentance, making tawbah, a sinner, a sinner, someone who has committed sins, walks into the masjid, falls on the musallah, and cries to Allah for forgiveness. He doesn't know He doesn't know what Allah is thinking, but Allah has told us through the Prophet that Allah is so happy with him that Allahu Akbar is like that person who lost the camel and found it again. It's like he found his life. He found his life. And then such a person becomes like he, as if he or she never committed a sin. Such a person is so cleansed and so cleaned as if this person has never committed a sin. How many of you have killed people? I don't expect you to tell me. And I hope you haven't. Right? I'm sure none of you is a murderer. Alhamdulillah. But this is East London. You never know. I'm only joking. May Allah protect us. May Allah protect our children. Because there is a lot of shenanigans going out, uh, going out, going around. You know, out, out there, drug violence and stabbings and things like that. May Allah protect us. But think about, think about this, that I know, inshallah, none of you is a murderer. I know that. I can, I know most people here, mashallah, Allah bless you. But what do you think of a person who has killed 99 people? 99 people. This is in Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari. 99 people. This person killed 99 people and he wants to be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's a murderer. Mass murderer. He's a mass murderer. Right? So he goes to, you know, someone with knowledge. 
and he tells him that I have killed 99 people. Is there any chance for me? And he tells him, 99 people? Audhu Billah, no chance for you. You're finished. How do you even, I mean, how dare you even come and ask? So he said, okay, 99, so let, let it be 100. He kills him. But he doesn't give up on Allah's mercy. Even though he kills him, but doesn't listen to him, and he's still seeking. So he goes to another person and he tells him, look, there is a town of some good people. You can go there and I'm sure there is a way out for you. Right? So he makes his way and he dies on the way. This is a person now. Who is this person? He's a murderer of 99 people plus a scholar. Okay? Plus a scholar. So this is a very uh, big sinner. This is... Uh, this is a very, very bad person. This is a mass murderer. Right? So on the way he dies. So what is he actually doing? He is seeking Allah's mercy. Yes or no? He is seeking Allah's mercy. Right? 99 people plus a scholar. He dies. And then the angels come. There is a group of angels, they want to take him to Jahannam. How can this mass murderer have a chance of forgiveness? We'll take him to Jahannam. The other group says, no, 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 no. He was actually on his way to repentance. So we go by his intentions. He was actually repentant. He was on his path to repentance. So then they decide, we measure his distance from the town he was making his way to, from where he left. If his distance to the town where he was going for repentance is closer, then we take him to Jannah. And if it is closer to where he left from, where he came from, then he goes to Jahannam. They agree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stretches the land and brings him closer to the town of repentance. Allahu Akbar. Why is the Prophet telling us this? Why is the Prophet وسلم, telling us this story? Why? There is a message. Kullu bani Adam khatta wa khayrul khattain at-tawwabun. All of you are sinners. All of you. But the best of you are those who repent. Never give up on Allah. Do not do that. Don't ever do that. Don't give up on Allah no matter what. No matter what the condition is, no matter what the time is, no matter what the day is, no matter where you are, do not give up on Allah. Don't ever give up on Allah. His mercy, His compassion, His generosity is bigger than you can imagine. And the month of Ramadan is that time. Because where Allah actually talks about the month of Ramadan and calls it effectively, or tells us when the Quran was revealed. The, 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 the month of Ramadan is when the Quran was revealed in Surah Baqarah, verse 155. The very next verse, verse 166, right next to the, the verse of the month of Ramadan. The verse of the month of Ramadan in Surah Baqarah, verse 155, 185. The, the very next verse, 186, what does Allah say? When my slave asks of me, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ anni, When my slave asks of, or asks of me, فَإِنِّي قريب, Tell him, let him know that I am close, I am listening, Allahu Akbar. Right next to the month of Ramadan, this verse, that, if you ask of Allah or you call upon Allah, know and remember that He is close. He is close. When Allah says He's close, He's close. He's listening. Ujibu da'wat da'i. That I will respond to those who pray to me, who call upon me. I will respond. Allah is telling us. When he calls upon me, So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, Allahu Akbar, that those who call upon me, my slaves, 
I am close, I am listening and I will respond. When they call upon me, I will respond. What more do you want? What more do you want? Why do you want to run to this guy, that guy, chuf chuf, baba, chacha, mama? What, what is wrong with you people? What is wrong with you people? Why do you even think of anyone else? When your Lord, your Allah is talking to you in such clear terms. وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي When my slave, or my slaves, my slaves, when they call upon me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيب, I am close. So it's like there's a boss, it's like there's a boss in a company, in an institution, and he has his doors wide open to the entire staff. Yes? He tells the staff, I am your boss, you need anything, you come straight to me. And when you come to me, I will listen to you and reward you. And the staff listens to him. The staff, they hear his voice, they hear his words, and they know what he means. Then what do these people do? They go to the secretary, they go to the manager, they go to the chacha, they go to the mama, they go to the chuf chuf sarkar or some other sarkar. Yeah? They don't want to go to the boss. And the boss has written at the door and the doors over. I am here, come to me. You need anything, come to me. Who is to blame? Who is to blame? You, the foolish people, knowing well that the boss has told you, I am here for you. Call upon me. I will listen to you. But you leave the boss and you go to all other people around who have no value, who can't do anything for you. Who is to blame? And then they brutalize you. They, they, they misguide you. They take money from you. They take bribes from you. And still your job doesn't, it doesn't get done. Because you are ignoring the boss who has the solutions. وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When you need something, I am close. Call upon me, I will listen. And this is right next to the verse of the month of Ramadan. So make dua. Make plenty of dua. Beg Allah. Beg Allah for all his blessings. Beg Allah. Cry to Allah in the month of Ramadan. Beg like you have never begged. And feel pride in begging the Lord of the Lords. The Lord of all the kings and all the major, all the, the great things ever imagined. He's the creator of everything. He has the biggest treasures in his possession. Ask him. Beg him. And he will grant. He will give. And and when you beg him, beg him by his own status. Don't ask for petty things. Don't beg for a new car. Don't, don't beg for a job. Don't beg for a bank account or bank balance. Of course, ask, ask him for halal money, no problem. Right? But most importantly, ask for guidance, hidayah. Ya Allah, put me on the straight path. Ya Allah, give me the right aqidah. Ya Allah, give me the correct belief. Ya Allah, give me the tawfiq to worship you. Even to bow in front of him is a blessing. If you are not worshipping Allah, clearly you are not upon guidance. The fact that you are able to bow, it is because of his blessings, because he wants you to worship him. You worship him by his permission, by his blessings. So ask him, Allah, give me the tawfiq to, to worship you as you deserve to be worshipped. Or, oh Allah, accept my little worship and forgive me. And you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiving you. So the Quran is a testimony to all these things. So the practical things I want to share with you, my brothers. Why? Because the month of Ramadan is not to be wasted. First of all, Another thing I want to remind you about is the fact that the, the month of Ramadan 
is an opportunity so you must avoid vain talk and wasting time the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man lam yada qawla qala zur wal amala bihi fa laysa lillahi haja fi an yada ta'amahu wa sharabahu anyone who does not abstain from vain talk in ramadan and does not abstain from acting upon that vain talk then allah does not need his starvation and his thirst allah doesn't need it the prophet sallallahu alaihi said this rawahu al bukhari this is sahih bukhari that anyone in the month of ramadan while fasting who does not abstain from vain talk okay you're still you know with your friends and you're smoking and your shisha and you know backbiting and talking like a street guy or some you know all that kind of stuff whatever it is if you don't abstain from that don't bother fasting you're wasting your time you're starving yourself allah doesn't need it the prophet said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so fasting is a state of being siyam or som is a state of being you must be in a state of humility towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you control your gaze you control your eyes you control your behavior you control your limbs you control your tongue okay and on top of that whenever your limbs move when your tongue moves it must move for allah's remembrance for dhikr of allah it your hands move then they should be doing sadaqa if your feet or legs move then they should be moving towards the masjid or doing something good remember that it is an entire sense of being in this month it's not just not eating and drinking people think it's just eating and drinking stopping eating and drinking and the rest of the day they're still cheating lying screaming shouting misbehaving backbiting smoking i mean smoking not in the, in the day but at night right you still not abstaining from haram right all of this put together then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fa laysa lillahi hajatun fi an yad'a ta'amahu wa sharabahu allah is not in need of your starvation and your thirst don't keep it keep it also in the month of ramadan this is why another point you have to be kind and generous it is narrated kana rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ajwad an-nas wa kana ajwad ma yakunu fi ramadan hina yalqahu jibril that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the most generous of people generally generally very kind and generous but in the month of ramadan he would become even more generous even more kind allahu akbar imagine how can a generous ultimately generous person become more generous but that happened in the month of ramadan and people noticed that in his character that he was so generous so in the month of ramadan be generous my brothers and sisters with your behavior with your tongue with your sadaqa with your with your spending of money you know with your zakat with your sadaqa whatever you are you're doing be generous and have tawakkal in allah when you give when you spend so what about those who waste the month of ramadan and do not benefit from it there's a hadith on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it's hasan sahih it's in sahih ibn hibban abu hurairah radhiyallahu anhu reported the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he ascended the pulpit the member and said amin 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 three times he said amin 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 it was said oh messenger of allah you ascended the pulpit the member and said amin 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 the prophet said verily jibril came to me and he said whoever reaches the month of ramadan and he is not forgiven listen everyone listen pay attention 
whoever reaches the month of Ramadan and he is not forgiven, then he will enter hellfire and Allah will cast him far away. Allahu Akbar. And when Jibreel said this, the Prophet said, Ameen. Such a person is truly unfortunate. The month of Ramadan comes and he does not get forgiven. Does not get forgiveness. So you're either a negligent fool or you are an arrogant person or you are someone who has lost hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will not be forgiven. And if that's the case, then you will end up like this. Then it goes on to say, I said, I mean, whoever sees his parents in their old age, one or both of them, and he does not honor them and he dies, then he will enter hellfire and Allah will cast him far away. So I said, Amin. Whoever has your name mentioned in his presence and he does not send blessings upon you and he dies, then he will enter hellfire and Allah will cast him far away. So say Amin. And I said, Amin. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Three things in this hadith. Three things. Number one, Ramadan. If Ramadan comes and you don't get yourself forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the ways already mentioned or one of the ways, then you will be in hellfire. Clearly. You're someone who doesn't even want mercy from Allah. Who doesn't want his blessings. Because he has provided this opportunity for you and you ignore it and neglect it and don't benefit from it. You truly deserve Jahannam. And the Prophet said, I mean to it. Second thing, parents, both or one of them. What do you see in this hadith? Three opportunities in your lives. Three opportunities that you miss. You are a truly unfortunate person. Three opportunities. Number one is Ramadan. Number two is parents. Your gates to paradise. In fact, in other reports, it is narrated, al jannatu tahta aqadam al ummahat al jannatu tahta aqadam al ummahat jannah is under the feet of mothers and there is another report in abu daud which says both the parents mothers and fathers and if you don't honor them don't please them don't take care of them then you are going to be in hellfire the prophet said amin and whoever does not send salawat upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also someone who deserves Jahannam because you don't honor the Prophet Wasallam. So it's about honoring the month of Ramadan, giving it its due, honoring your parents, giving them their due, and honoring the Messenger of Allah Wasallam, giving him his due. And if you don't, then Jahannam. So practically, my brothers, finally, what can we do in the month of Ramadan? Read the Quran. Read the Quran excessively and extremely as much as you can. Okay? You must finish the Quran at least one time. At least one time if you can't do more. Okay? At least read one juz a day, which takes about 20 minutes to half an hour, depending on how you read. And read with love and compassion. Read with attention. Read with care. Don't just. Uh, you know, beat a horse, as they say, you know, don't, don't, don't just take the boxes. It's not about taking the boxes. Read with care. Contemplate. Even if you had to read, uh, if you have to read translation with it, no problem. There is a very good app. Nowadays, your phones, Allahu Akbar, put aside TikTok and Instagram for the month of Ramadan. Okay? Don't watch your bakwas for this month. Okay? Don't watch people being stupid and behaving like monkeys just this in this month. Um, just put that aside and there is an app called Quran Lee Quran Lee Quran Lee there's an app download the app and it actually helps you keep up with the Quran it is such an amazing app that it sends you reminders that this is how much you have done you can do it more you can do it you can do it today so you set your targets and then the app actually reminds you okay so it's called the Quran Lee app and it's it's you know it's an amazing opportunity for you guys to take benefit from uh, this app. This is what it looks like. Okay, um, okay, it sends you different reminders, but this is what it looks like. Okay, it's going to remind you how 
to read the Quran systematically. So it will help you, inshallah. You can download it, you can pay for it, and there is a free option as well. If you cannot afford it, tick, I cannot afford it, it will allow you free entry, inshallah. It's a very excellent app, and, uh, and I strongly recommend it. So a practical tip for the month of Ramadan is read the Quran. Read the Quran every single day, at least some part of it, inshallah. Will we do it? Inshallah. Another practical tip I want to do, or I want to share with you is that at least do one good secret deed every day in the month of Ramadan and make it a habit and keep it, carry it through Ramadan into the, the remaining year. So at least do one minor or major good deed every single day, apart from your conventional fasting and your prayers and your taraweeh. Specifically, do it secretly that only you and Allah know about it. Okay? Uh, so... At least do one. This is my personal, uh, you know, uh, advice. Also, um, in the month of Ramadan, do as, as much sadaqa, add as much sadaqa as possible. Be as kind to your families as possible. Be as generous to your wives, your children, your parents as possible. Make a real difference. Make a real difference. Also, try to control your tongues. Even if you get angry, and you're fasting, okay? Uh, don't let it get to your, your head. And control your emotions and your anger and your, uh, your, your, your temper, okay? So control your tongues. Hold on. And try to remember, remind yourselves that you can do this outside of Ramadan. So Allah is preparing you for the rest of the year. Allah is cleansing you from your sins. Allah is purifying you. At the same time, Allah is preparing you for the rest of the year so that you go on for long doing this work, inshallah. Also, do not miss the prayers, night prayers. At least, even if you are not able to come to the masjid for whatever reason, do it at home sometime. Do it with your family, your wives and your children. Okay? You know, wallahi, I remember the best Ramadan of my life I mean, as far as I know, I don't know, maybe there was another better Ramadan, only Allah knows, the best Ramadan when I felt good was the one that I spent with my family in lockdown. Because we were all locked up, right? We, we couldn't go out. There was a frenzy going on, right? Remember? The first lockdown, the first Ramadan of the lockdown, the first Ramadan, and Ramadan came like what? Very, very like many few weeks later. And that was Allahu Akbar. That was amazing. You know, spending time with the family and being with the kids and, 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 and the wife and praying with them, reading the Quran. And that was the best. I mean, that, that's how I felt. And then as soon as the lockdown is open, then we are all back to business, right? So I advise you to lock yourselves Lock yourselves for the month of Ramadan and try to establish a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So these are some of the practical tips I have. Don't waste this opportunity. Please do your best to get as close as possible to Allah. Repent. Make tawbah. Do your salah diligently. Read the Quran as much as you can. Don't leave any fast deliberately. Don't let it go. Okay? And, and even if, it, if it's gone, don't go to keep going. Try the next one, the next one, and the next one. Okay, so many people have different challenges, different issues in their lives. May Allah help you to be diligent in your worship, and may Allah accept your Ramadan and your fasting and your qiyam and your sayam. Jazakum Allah khairan for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.